Bible is the word of God. I agree with God. My life is about to be changed right here, right in front of me. I agree with God. I depend on God. I can count on God. I have access to the throne of grace. When I call on God, He answers me. Thank you, Jesus, for the access to the throne of grace. Thank you, Lord, for answering all my prayers. Every one of my prayers. If God said no, I'm grateful. If God said yes, I'm grateful. If God said wait, I'm really grateful. Amen. A lot of times, today we're talking about continuation. I was going to change the topic, don't stay in that topic. Bless God. Don't forget his benefits. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. <clears throat> God showed me something that was very profound, that we know already, but it's also a revelation to what we already know. When God promises something, that which He promised shall come to pass. But there's a process that you must go through to get God's promises. Don't let anybody ever deceive you that you don't have to walk in holiness, you can still be used by God. Don't let anybody have to deceive you that you can walk in sin and still be godly. Hallelujah. Amen. God is saying to you right now, I love you. I care about you. You are somebody to me. I got a plan for your life. The thought I have towards you, the thought that I have is of, is of good, is of peace, and not of evil. Right. To give you the expected end. I will be fond of you. It shall come to pass. Before you call, I will answer. Yeah. What you are here speaking, I will hear. Yeah. I love you. I care about you. Yeah. You are somebody to me. Thank you you belong to God. Yeah. I don't belong to you. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people know the story about Joseph. And it's very, very interesting. Oh, the young man had a dream. And he didn't keep his mouth shut. He told his brother his dream. And they hated him more the more. They already hated him. Because his father had him at, at an old age. Yes. And they had a coat for him. Yeah. His father had a coat. They had, they had a coat for him. It's a special coat. So the, the brothers were jealous of him. They didn't like him at all. Why well, they didn't like him and he had a coat? He had a dream. He had a dream. That's Genesis 37. That's where I'm going. Yeah? That's what we have. Genesis 37. He had a dream. Verse 4. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. It's not nothing wrong when somebody is not speaking a kind word to you. You don't expect everybody to like you because you belong to God. Are you, are you listening to me? Yes. We have too many of these things that we have in our way that keep us from going with God all the way. We want to go with God, but we expect everybody to like it. No! It doesn't happen. If they persecute me, they will persecute you also. If they love me, they will love me. As it is written in their law. They hated me without cause. So if you work with God for real, not everybody will like you. There are people that don't want to work with God, and you're working with God will convict them. That's why they don't like you. So get used to it. Stand your ground and still walk in holiness and be, be kind to them. They don't have to like you. I don't want anybody to like me to go into hell. They can like you, but if you don't do what God tells you to do, if you don't give it life to Jesus, then you have to die for your own sins. So don't get off this liking business and get to obedience to God. Genesis 37 4. When the brother saw that his father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak kindly to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brother, they hated him all the more. But this is Genesis 37 5. He had a dream, he told his brothers, There's nothing wrong with telling your brother, you think, you think they love you. Not everybody is happy for you. Yeah. Yeah. Even within your own family, they, they can hate you. If you just go with God all the way, they say, there's got to be something wrong with you. You don't, you don't take all that, they tell you. <laughs> so listen to the dream I had. 
Verse 7. <laughs> we are buying the sheep of grain out of the field, and suddenly my sheep rose and stood upright. While your sheep gather around me and bow down to it. His brother said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams. Then he had another dream. And he told the people that hated him. He told the brother, <laughs> I'm going somewhere. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 10, or verse 9. He had another dream, told his brothers, listen, I had another dream, and this time the sun and the moon were, and the living stars were bound down to me. When he told his father, as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is the dream you had? Will your mother and your brother and I and your brother clearly come down and bow down to you, the ground before you? His brother was jealous of him, but his father kept that in mind. His father kept that in mind. He kept it in mind. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 17. Thank you, Jesus. Joseph's father, Jacob, he told Joseph to go and look for his brothers, to go and look for their well-being. Because was, so he was going to look for their well-being. Stay with me. So while he was looking for them, he couldn't find them. And then somebody saw him wandering around. They asked, they asked him, where are you going? What's going on? He said, well, I'm looking for my brothers. Verse 17. They are moving on from here. The man answered, I had them say, let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in the distance. And before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. They plotted to kill him. Listen to me. When you have a vision from God, you're going to have a near-to-death experience, but you will never die. Because God will never give you a vision that you cannot fulfill. Amen. So many of us do not understand that the vision of God is, is, is ingrained, and it's impossible for you not to fulfill your vision in your life. So what we do when things go wrong, it's like, oh, wait a minute, oh, is the Lord with us or not? Oh, what's going on? Well, I think it's falling and cracking. It's not because you don't believe the vision. You don't have enough confidence in the vision that God will give you. When God gives you a vision, you have to have a confidence in that vision. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. God is not a man that he should lie, or some man that should repent. So we have too many people cracking because of what they see, and not holding up to the vision that God has given them. Stop! Stop it! Hey! Hallelujah! So here comes the dreamer. They said to each other, Come now, let's kill him, and throw him into one of these cisterns. And, say, and then therefore, for, then, let's say, for sure, animal kill him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. The devil wants to kill you. But we have the dream that God gives you. And whatever dream God gives you, it's impossible. It's impossible. It can be a plane crash if you survive. Why? Because the dream of God for your life will have to come to pass. God will not have you facing him in heaven with an unfulfilled dream if you are obedient to him. Hallelujah. You will not die before your time. Hallelujah. Amen. So stop worrying in between you, with, with, your vision, with the vision that God has given you and wondering whether you're going to be okay or not. You will be okay because, you, because God never lies. Yeah. If God shows you the dream, then hold on to it. If He shows you the vision, then hold on to it. For goodness sake, that's the benefit. Forget not all this benefit. The, one of the benefits of God is this. God never lies. Whatever God says, it shall come to pass. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. It's the glory and the gifts are of our head. It's the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. He loves you. He cares about you. You are somebody. Say, don't give up on him. Don't quit on him. I said, don't quit and don't give up. Don't give up and don't quit. Don't quit and don't give up. Don't give up and don't quit. This is a recording. Don't give up and don't quit. Verse 22. Don't shed any blood. Throw him to the system here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Joseph was 17 years old. He said, well, we don't want to kill him physically. Let's just throw him in the system. They threw him in the system, and the place had no water. It was dry. Question! If God show you you're going to rule over a nation, and then you find yourself in the system, what do you do? Well, this system, and there's no water there, what am I going to do now? God has a plan. You're not going to stay in the system for long enough. Why do you throw them in the system? You know what happened? They saw the caravan of the Midianites 
passing by. So, well, let's just get him out and sell him. After all, he's our brother. Let's make some profit. Yeah. Why are you worrying about the water you're going to get from the system? God has a plan of them selling you and bringing you out of there and selling you. Wow. So, people that have no vision, or people that don't trust in the vision of God for their life, you cannot crack in the system. It's going, to, it's going to be sold to the Midianite. You cannot crack with the Midianite. It's going to be sold to Potiphar's house. You cannot crack in Potiphar's house. It's going to go to prison. <laughs> there, are, <laughs> are you listening to me? There's a process to everything that God's going to do in your life. So by the time you get there, you don't get, get arrogant. Then I did. You, you, didn't, you know it's God that did it all. If you crack in the system, you can forget it. You never get to the palace. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to be sold to the Midianite. It's going to be sold to Potiphar's house. It's going to go to prison for not messing around with Potiphar's wife. Yeah. It's going to stay in the prison for more than two years. Mm. Come on, talk to me now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We want this miracle, but we don't want to go through the process. Yeah. Whoever God made, nobody can break. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Bishop. David was anointed by Samuel to be the king of Israel. After he, was anointed, after he was anointed, guess what he was doing? He was playing a harp for Saul with his anointed self. Mm -hmm. How would you like to play a harp looking at the throne where he's supposed to be sitting? He said, wait a minute now, I've been anointed king, man. So Saul, get off. No. No. Every time when God's timing, every time. So if you did not, see, David had the anointing, but not the experience. If you have gone, to the throne immediately after he got anointed by Samuel, he went to know he was supposed to sit on the throne. Yeah. He had to learn the protocol. So while he was playing the harp for the one <laughs> sitting on the throne, he said, hey, so that's where I'm supposed to sit when I'm ready. So this is, this is the way things work. See, many people have their nothing but not experience. I mean, you won't wait for God for the experience because you can't wait. You don't want to wait. So therefore, you're not done in the process. That's why you have big biscuit. <laughs> You cannot crack in the system. They threw him in the system. That was a 17 year old, you all. They threw him in the system. I'm going somewhere. They threw him there. And many of us you know what we do. They will start complaining in the system. Oh my goodness, I'm in the system and there's no water. We're just going to die here. You won't be there for long. The same God that allowed that to happen will get you out. Isn't that interesting? They threw him in the system, 17 year old. And many of the people of today who just complain. Well, they just know that here, this is a system, and they say, you have no water, oh my goodness. Because you don't understand, do you? It's a test. You made the system for long, because I want to put their mind to save you. They throw in the system, all you think about trouble in the system, say, get them out of the day. Send them to the Midianites. And they sold them to the Midianites. But you know something? While they were sold to the Midianites, God was with them. While it was in the system, God was with them. So listen to me. Many of us need to understand that just because you are going through trouble in your life does not mean that God is not with you. It goes two ways. If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, who can be against us? Another thing. How, how about you? Are you for God? You always say, God be for us. Are you for God? God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So if anybody is quitting, it's you that quit on God. God don't quit on you. If God be for us, who can be against us? That sounds good. Are you for God? It goes both ways. Because I've not lost anyone that you have given me, but you can walk out of his hand if you choose to. God will never force you to stay with him. God will never force you to serve him. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. He loves you. He cares about you. Wow. Interesting. Glory be to God in the highest. Forget not all his benefit. The major benefit that God has after salvation is his word. If God says it, don't worry about everything will go crazy. There'll be earthquake, tornado, everything else, but it does settle. <laughs> his word shall never pass away. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. But you see, during the night, then with the twin towers that uh, got bombed with the plane and everything. It was so sad, and we prayed for the families of the people. But there was one thing that was interesting that they said, but they said the news, and I call it. They said, oh, since I'm just so stressed right now, and people are having sex. 
as an adverb outlet. Joseph, first Potiphar's wife, as a 17 year old, he didn't use it as an outlet. Many people go through different things. They put to the cistern already, they threw him in the cistern, the guy, so, so to the midnight, the guy from there, so to Potiphar's house. By the time Potiphar's wife, wife said, hey, sleep with me. Wait a minute, I found a guy in relief. No, you don't. Because if you do, you, never, you lose your connection Amen. to the palace. Amen. See, many of us, they do right for a little bit, and then you deviate in between. Blocking the way of the Lord. Slowing down the process of your miracle. Slowing down your vision. Because then you have an outlet. I finally got an outlet. God understand. Lord, I've been through the pit already. I've been so to the midnight already. Lord, I've, I've been a slave in the first house. I finally got a chance for relief. No. No. Never allow perfection to be your relief. When, when God says, without holiness, no man shall see God. If this is a man with his wife, if he, he messed with him, do you know what's going to happen? He, he might go to prison to turn on, but he, he missed the prison. He missed the time. There was a time when the baker and the cop bearer was in prison. That's the time this man to be there, so he connect to the palace. If he was messing around with his wife, he wouldn't be there. The people in the prison would be in the prison, and one of them would die, you know. The baker will die, and, Paul, Paul, and the copyright will, will, will be restored. But they will have no interpretation. And so, if you, so you don't want to miss the timing of God by using the perversion to relieve yourself. It was a stressful situation. God knows, after everything I've been through, you better keep a pen and keep a zip up. Be ye holy without it, and no man shall see God. Stress and what you go through is not an excuse yes. to talk to the world. Yes. Mm. Wow. It was, and then you know something else? Paul of did not stop at one time. She went up time, day after day. Some, some of us are just waiting for it to happen the second time. So, well, I said no the first time. What am I supposed to do? I said, no. What if I said, I said, no. I said, no. I said, no. Because really mean no. And then, and, then, and then she came back again, what am I supposed to do? Same thing with the fact that no. Do not tamper with your connection and alter your destination. You could have messed around with Potiphar's wife in the last five minutes. But guess what? The tribe, Jesus Christ was supposed to come through the tribe of Judah, and there was a famine in the land. And so if you mess around with Potiphar's wife, you'll never be in a position to feed the people of Israel to preserve the will of the Lord. So that, that, that's the cost of messing around with Potiphar's wife. You won't be able to feed the nation for for seven years of famine. How will that? How will that to keep the God people starved? The tribe that Christ was supposed to come from the tribe of Judah. The, the, let me tell you something that's very interesting. Do you know that it was Judah that said, "After all, it's our own flesh and blood. Let us sell him. Don't lay hands on him. It's our own flesh and blood. So we're going to sell him." That was the tribe that Christ came from. If Joseph did not feed them. We would have been blocking the, blocking the tribe that Christ is supposed to come from to redeem the whole world. Is, is it wasn't messing around with Potiphar's wife to block the way of, of God coming? To block the way of redemption? That's what you see. The price that we pay for messing around is too costly. And we don't get it. You keep on falling for it. If somebody will tell you, well, here's Potiphar's wife. If you mess around with that now, this. The, the, the tribe, including the tribe that Christ is supposed to come from, will be starving. You can, you can really, really hinder God coming to, re, to redeem the old man's kind. Right. Christ redeemed the whole world. But Joseph could have messed around with it in five minutes. 
and block that way. It's too costly for us not to work with God. Amen. At no time is it okay to substitute sin for holiness Amen. as a temporary relief. Hallelujah. i say it again. At no time is it okay to substitute sin for holiness as a temporary relief Hallelujah. One more time. for my troubles. At no point is it okay to substitute sin for holiness as a temporary relief for my troubles. Amen. Joseph's brother took his robe, threw him in the system. See, the robe was there to Joseph because it was specially made for him. They took his robe. There will be a time that people will take your physical possession. Are you going to still love them? And then somebody take one to you. Find out, ask yourself a question. What is it that is so dear to me, something physical that is so dear to me? Maybe it's a beautiful dress, a beautiful silk garment, or whatever it is. If somebody will just take it, Without the permission, will you, will, will, you, will you love them? They took his robe. You want to know something now? How do you think Potiphar and his wife felt when Joseph was in charge of the grain? The person you're lying on, you need him now to go and ask him for grain. Right. You go to a federal person and say, no, don't ask me, ask Joseph. Whatever Joseph said, the guy had the power to starve it to death for lying on him and throwing him in the prison. But they say, if he didn't throw him in the prison, he never get to make it to the palace. Mm -hmm. So what he meant for evil, God make it for good. All things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. All things, say what we say, all things work together, together for good to them that love God and are do things according to his purpose. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All things. So it may be the system, don't complain. Because it's temporary. Why are you thinking about sisters? They are already thinking about selling it to the millionaires. Mm -hmm. Talking about selling based on the millionaires, they are already thinking about selling it to Potiphar. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. That every step of the way was orchestrated by God because the, the man was with God. Yeah. God was with him and he was with God. He didn't let, he didn't let go of God neither. Many of us let go of God when things get tough enough. Don't do that. When you do that, you miss a connection. See, sometimes we travel from here to Chattanooga, you know, and we might go from St. Louis to South Carolina or Carolina, from Carolina to South Chattanooga. If you get to Carolina and you even make the next connection, you never get to your destination. So that's what sin will do to us. When we stop trusting God, when we stop hoping, putting our hope in God, yeah. then in South Carolina instead of Chattanooga, you travel, you stand strong and everything about in between. I say in between. In between, you delayed your prison time by messing around with Potiphar's wife. Yes. So, the five minutes enjoyment, yeah. and people were supposed to meet in the prison and get to the palace, they already were in prison and they already came out. So, when you are there, there's no connection. Yes, but you know, you didn't know there's no connection because God will never tell you everything before you go. If He tell you everything, then you don't have to walk by faith. You just have to trust God. Isn't that interesting? That if you're obedient to God when things get tough, then your promise will never be late. Let me say this If you are obedient to God when things get tough, then your promise will never be late. Because right. everything you do, all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to His purpose. All things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to His purpose. To them that love God. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. You've got to keep, keep on doing what they tell you to do. Even though, even though it may not be convenient, it may not be easy. It might look like the old world is against you. It might look like they throw you in the system. See, what people will complain in the system. You've got a long way to go, partner. After the system, you're going to be sold to the Midianite. Midianite is going to be sold to Potiphar's wife. Potiphar is going to throw you to the prison. And then after the prison, you have to wait for two years. After two years passed in the prison. So sometimes you feel like God forgot you. That's the way it felt. Can I tell you something? Is the, Joseph could have run away from the prison. He was in charge of the prison. He got the keys to the prison. He could have just said, what am I doing now? What am I doing here? I got the wrong for them put me in there and take off running. Do you see now? We look for easy way out. If you have taken off running and took off running, by the time the people have the dream, it will not be there to interpret the dream. And the whole nation of uh, Egypt will have come to turmoil. Because was not there to let them know, hey, even though things are looking great, you still have seven years. We need the visionary. We need you. You are the visionary. 
God put the vision in you purposely. And you're going to go through a test of time. You're going to go through a, a trial time, a temptation time. Come on. Amen. Everybody is doing it. Everybody, you are not everybody. Amen. Everybody may be doing it, but you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You have been amped. You have been called out of darkness into this marvelous light. Hallelujah. Hey, you can make it today by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are prophesying and not many. You are the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Many of you are thinking, well, if I can just have money, I'll do great. How much money did Joseph have in the pit? No? But he had gold. Come on, talk to me now. Help me for the father. Help for the father with no money, but he got the anointing. He got the presence of God. Just keep on watching. He's a beautiful baby in charge of all the grain. All the grain. Hallelujah. People sing it, they sing a song. You can take this all, just give me Jesus. They don't mean it. The, 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 as soon as something goes wrong like this, I say, what are we, oh God, what are we going to do now? I thought they just got through singing, you can take this all, just give me Jesus. They don't mean it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, don't tap out with your connection. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He alone is worthy. Psalm 119, verse 98. Psalm 119. Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God in the highest and that is known to all men. Our name is favorite. Psalm 119 is very interesting. Verse 98 to 104. Very, very interesting. Something very, very interesting happened there. Hallelujah. Where's 119? Where are you there? Psalm 98. Psalm 119, verse 98. There you go, I got 98 now. Your commander are always with me and make me worse than my enemies. You know what we do most of the time? When somebody makes us mad, we just go against them and they walk in unforgiveness. He said, Don't do what I say. You'll be worse than all your enemies. Yeah. Do what the Bible says, you're going to be worse than all your enemies. Yes. Do, want not to be wiser, then do what the Bible says. Very simple. Yeah. Don't worry about the enemy, what somebody do to you, or they don't like you, or they try to. Derail you, or they try to lie on you, or try to get you fired. No, those are all chicken play on the ground floor. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Your commands, come on. Are always with me. I make me more than my enemies. Verse 99. I have more instant than all my teachers for meditation and studies. The Bible says, if you meditate on what the Bible says, you have more wisdom than everybody ever taught you anything. All your teachers put together. All the universities put together with all the teachers, you have more wisdom than them if you obey God. Wow. I'm going somewhere. You stay with me. That's the benefit. You are keep telling you, you get the benefit. <laughs> but 100. I have more understanding than the elders for obey your precepts. God said, if you, do, if you obey what I say, you have more wisdom than your great grandmother. All the grandmother, grandfather, and grandma, everybody put together, you have more wisdom than them. You are more wisdom than your enemies. You are more wisdom than your teachers. You are more wisdom than the old, the old folk put together. There's something about, it's a benefit, you all. What about the benefit? Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yes. I just, I'm not making some sense. Yes, sir. Yeah. Somebody was looking for wisdom. He was looking for something, and they went to Sulat Market. You know, Sulat Market, where they said they have chicken and everything. <laughs> they went to Sulat Market and everything, and they went there. And they got on. I was trying to buy it, couldn't buy it, couldn't buy it, couldn't find it anywhere. He said, what are you looking for? I said, wisdom. I said, what? You won't find it here. We have chicken, we have... We have chicken, we have fish, we have... We have fish, we have goat. If you're looking for wisdom, it's kept in old folk. Look for old folk, that's where the wisdom is kept. The wisdom is kept in old folk. So the Bible says you have some more wisdom than the old folk. You know, all folk have a lot of experience. Yeah. They've been through all kinds of things in life. They make some mistakes and learn from it and different things that happen. The Bible says, if you wow. meditate on what the Bible says, you have more wisdom than everybody put together. All the teachers on the planet put together, you have more wisdom than them. Yeah. All the old folk in the world put together, you have more wisdom than them. Yeah. You have more wisdom than them. What is this? Benefit! Yeah. Wow. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. The benefit! Yeah. Verse 
That's one of one. I've kept my feet from the evil path. See? It got me for us. I you for God. I've kept my feet from, from the evil path. All your book, give you a call. Hey, babe, what are you doing? I, I, I know you say you're safe now. I, I don't do nothing. Let's just meet. You know what, man? That's what you met before, before you got saved. <laughs> Come on. Let's just, I, I, I ain't going to do nothing. I know you're saved. Is you safe? <laughs> you and me know what time it is. Amen. I will know we're not supposed to go. I have a strong conviction of the Holy Spirit. So you overrode the Holy Spirit. Because you didn't tell anybody you're going. Because you know it's wrong. Then you say you fell. No, you didn't fall. You planned it. <laughs> Sometimes when you plan it, and, and God gave you grace, and the person didn't show up, then you get mad that he stood you up. Verse 101, uh -huh. Psalm 119, I'm going to preach it now. I've kept my feet uh, from every evil path uh, so that I will obey your word. Uh -huh. I've not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me. I'll sit down your word to my taste, so that I'll honey in my mouth. Verse 104, I love it. I gain understanding from your precept. Your word teach me understanding. What is it? Therefore, I hate every wrong path. If you want to get to your destination and your vision in God, hate every wrong path. When God speaks to you, don't overrun the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, please go, my time is up. God bless you. <laughs>